I have been fortunate to go in and out of jobs over the past couple of years and most recently landed a job in the first three months of arriving here in Canada. So I want to spend some time today talking about my job hunting experiences and the seven mistakes to avoid if you are on a similar path whether here in Canada or elsewhere. Mistake number one, accepting wrong narratives. I see a lot of people falling into this trap of accepting wrong narratives about their chances of getting a job. I remember when I was looking for my current job this time last year, a lot of people were saying things like, oh, without Canadian experience, it was going to be difficult to get a job. And let me not lie, it was difficult. But what they didn't say was that it was going to be impossible to get a job. Now, did I get a lot of rejections? Yes. Did I fumble a few interviews? Yes. But guess what? I still got a job. And all I needed to do was to be optimistic and not accepting wrong narratives about my chances. And that's why you cannot be looking for a job and not be upbeat about your chances. I have instances when I talk to people, they don't sound optimistic as they should be. What I hear a lot of the time is anxiety, worry, and fear. But if you can just have a positive attitude, even if you have to fake it, coupled with a solid game plan, which we're going to talk about in the next point, then it's only a matter of time before a job finds you. And it's as simple as saying to yourself, I know I'll get a job in this market. I know there's a job out there for me. This time next year, I'll be in a role that I desire. As long as you don't lose your positive spirit, it's only a matter of time before a job finds you. Mistake number two not having a routine. Imagine you got a job today. That job will have you working nine to five, five days a week. And in between the eight hours of work, you have meetings, tasks, and projects that will keep you busy. And at the end of two weeks or a month, you get paid. Essentially, you're getting paid to show up unfailingly for these activities. And the scenario I just painted is what it looks like when you land a job and considering that this is the life you are desperately trying to achieve then it makes sense you start to lead the life while job hunting that means having some sort of daily routine when i was actively looking for a job i made sure that i had a routine that started at 10 a.m and ended at 2 p.m and that gave me four uninterrupted hours of not only to apply for jobs but also to work out a strategy and a plan to beat the system in essence, you gotta treat looking for a job as a job where you show up every day regardless of how you feel. Then we come to mistake number three, no game plan. So I earlier mentioned having a game plan to beat the system. One of the things I realized early on was that there was a lot of senior level tech jobs here in Toronto. And I decided early on that I wasn't gonna apply for a role that isn't analytics related. So it means I was able to focus on roles that I really wanted and ignore everything else. But that also meant that I had limited opportunities and would eventually run out of relevant jobs to apply for. So with that in mind, I spent a lot of time Time, updating my resume, brushing up on several courses, and practice working on a few projects. I didn't really practice interview questions because I was confident in communicating what I knew, and I didn't pursue any sort of certification either because I didn't have the bandwidth to do so. But these are examples of things you can consider as your game plan. In some other places, perhaps in the UK, Nigeria, or elsewhere in Canada, you may want to apply a different strategy and target jobs that are readily available within your location or change your location of search to a place where you have a better chance of success. Most important thing is to assess where you are and plan with whatever is available. Moving on to mistake number four, chasing too many roles at the same time. I find chasing too many roles at the same time ineffective and draining. It's natural to want to go after every opportunity when you're job hunting, but you shouldn't, especially if you're able to sustain yourself for a reasonable time while you're searching for a job. Actively searching for more than one role is you chasing shadows. And to land a job, you need to have some sort of narrow focus, meaning you want to commit time, energy, and resources to one key role and then make maybe have one other related role you can easily fit into. So it is important to define early on 
what that key role is and if it is available where you are located. So roles like data analyst, reporting analyst, BI analyst, reporting specialist, analytic consultants are all in the analytics family of roles and are examples of key roles to focus on. However, if there aren't that many analytics job where you are, then go for what is most available. You cannot force the market to hire roles they don't need. So target roles where you have a high chance of success and then use that to get into the workforce. Once you get into the workforce, you can work your way into whatever role your interest truly lies. Mistake number five, poor resume design. A poorly designed resume is a recipe for disaster. If you don't have a well-designed resume, pause this video now, go to the library, look for a book on resume writing and fix your resume. The problem with people that have poorly designed resume is that they don't know that their resume is terrible. And here are two ways to test if your resume passes for a well-designed resume. First, it must contain these features and in this order, name, location, email address, LinkedIn, three to five bullet points on profile summary, five to six bullet points on technical skills, two to three bullet points on projects, three to five bullet points for each role in your professional experience section, two to three bullet points for education and certificates. Try to keep it as simple as possible and not overdo it with unnecessary details like your date of birth and profile picture. The second test is called the first page test. And this is making sure that all the relevant information is on the first page of your resume so that if anyone ever picks up your resume, they don't have to flip to the next page. So your name, your contact details, profile summary, technical skills, projects, and professional experience must be on the first page. If you have more than one job experience, which most people do then your most current work experience must be on the first page and then every other work experience can be on the second page mistake number six being overly modest when it comes to crafting resume most people confuse being truthful with being modest being modest has nothing to do with being truthful you can be truthful and still be descriptive colorful and buoyant with your words and one of the areas to be colorful with your words is from how you describe your previous company so what can you write that will give Give anyone an idea of what type of company it was. Is it a tech company? Is it a financial services company? Is it an FMCG? Is it an oil and gas? Is it a pharmaceutical? Is it a Fortune 500 company, an industry leader, a market player, or a startup? What sort of catchphrase can you use to describe the company that would get anyone's attention? Most people just write the name of their company and assume people would know who they are and what they do, but no one will know until you tell them. So think of what additional context you can give to help enhance Enhance their profile which ultimately enhances your profile the second thing I like to do to enhance my resume is to summarize my previous job experience in one or two lines so I can say something like the data analyst is responsible for the way the company manages organizes stores and access the data it requires for his daily operations from various sources. This is something I can tweak however I see fit. For example, I can choose to reward it to include details showing that I have previously done what an employer is looking for without having to edit my entire resume. The last thing is obviously summarizing the biggest project and tasks you worked on while at your previous company and being able to quantify what you achieved and how you benefited the company. So spend some time thinking about how you can enhance these three areas as it will go a long way in shaping what recruiters think of you as an applicant. And finally, we get to mistake number seven, applying late. So you can have the perfect resume all you want. If a recruiter never gets to see it, then you're as good as someone who didn't apply. And the only way to increase your chances of a recruiter picking up your perfectly written resume is when you are an early applicant. Even LinkedIn and Indeed will typically recommend applying early to increase your chances of getting called for an interview. So why is this so? Imagine there are 1,000 applicants and you are a recruiter whose job is to find the right candidate. You might decide to take the first 100 applicants and screen them to find potential candidates. If by the time you draw the first 100 and there were 10 potentially good candidates for interview, 
you could decide to stop drawing and discard the remaining 900 applicants without needing to go through their resume. Now, in this scenario, not applying early would cost you a shot at an interview, even though you had a great resume. Now, you can argue that, oh, nowadays companies use ATS and you just need to beat the ATS regardless of when you apply. But the truth is, you don't know if that were true. You don't know if companies are really using ATS or there's a human sitting behind a desk doing it the old fashioned way. And best believe if it is done the old fashioned way, once they find a handful of candidates good enough for an interview, they will discard whatever is left. So it's another reason why having a routine while job hunting is so important so that you don't miss out putting that application early. Another thing you can do to mitigate against applying late is to keep a watch. I like to keep a watch for 12 midnight as for some weird reason, some job postings are scheduled to go live at midnight. So set an alarm to go off at midnight or stay awake up until midnight and check if anything new becomes available on LinkedIn and Indeed. This technique helped me to secure two interviews in successions and I was able to go on to land both offers. So, these are the seven mistakes I would avoid when job hunting. Let me know which one of them you're currently making and if this video was an eye opener to any one of them. As always, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.